there's, there's no harm in it because the, the, because it contains benefit for the people and the, the, there isn't any kind of special belief involved in this knowledge or attached to this knowledge. It's just mere, merely knowledge of the different time time periods. Then after this, <coughs> Shaykh al-Islam Muhammad bin Abdul Wahab rahimahullah, he narrated another uh, hadith from Abu Musa al-Ashari who said that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said ثَلَاثَةٌ لَا يَدْخُلُونَ الْجَنَّةِ مُدْمِنُ خَمْرٍ وَقَاطِئُ رَحِمٍ وَمُصَدِّقٌ بِالسَّحْرِ Narrated by Ahmad and Ibn Hibban in their Sahihs. In his, and Ibn Hibban in his Sahih. And so this translates as that the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said there are three who are not into paradise. The person who, who habitually and continually drinks alcohol. A person who, ta- who cuts the ties of kinship. And a person who believes in magic. So the Sheikh says that Abu Musa is the noble companion Abu Musa Abdullah bin Qais al-Ash'ari and the al-Ash'ari is an ascription to a group from Yemen who were known as the Ash'ariyin Ash'ariyin, so the origin is in Yemen and Abu, Abu Musa al-Ash'ari is from the most superior of the Sahaba and from the most noble and from the most honorable and noble and he was, you know, he had many noble actions during the time of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and likewise in the time of the rightly guided Khulafa and he also has a very great and lofty status in Islam may Allah be pleased with him um, he used to have a beautiful voice when he used to recite the Quran and the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam would listen to him and would also praise him for that so he said, quoting, narrating from the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam ثَلَاثَةٌ لَا يَدْخُلُونَ الْجَنَّةِ there are three who are not into paradise and the Shaykh says that this is to be taken as a threat and it's to be left upon its apparent meaning. It's to be left upon its apparent meaning. Meaning that we don't interpret this word, wording, we don't explain it, and we don't try to give it an interpretation that makes it less serious than what it is, and makes it less significant and important than what it is. So we leave it exactly as it is. Meaning we just say, three will not enter paradise. And we leave it as that. Even though we know, even though we know that the people who fall into each of these sins, that they don't necessarily fall uh, outside of Islam so even though we know that a person who drinks wine habitually or cuts off his uh, ties of kinship or whatever we know that they, they don't leave Islam even though we know that we leave this wording at the beginning of this hadith as it is from the angle of the threat and the severe threat that it, that it, that it, that it, that it, that it gives towards those who fall into these actions and if we were to then start interpreting and saying this and that whatever it would then diminish and reduce the severity and the effect that it would have upon the people you know, uh, they might start taking these affairs lightly so the Sheikh says that when it says three will enter paradise, we leave it as it is and who are these three people? they are Mudmin al-Khamr, the one who habitually drinks wine the one who, you know, he's always drinking wine and he doesn't repent to Allah from it and the Sheikh says that drinking wine is from the major sins and any person who declares it to be permissible is a kafir, is, is disbelieved and whoever believes that it, that it is impermissible and unlawful and he drinks it out of a desire, personal desire then he has done a major sin and he is to be considered a fasik, a sinner who is deficient in his iman and when it is established upon him by his own admission or by witnesses that he, is, that he has been drinking alcohol then the punishment is established upon him which is 80 lashes and this is because this punishment which is given is in order to protect the intellect and which obviously is the most noble of the things which, is, which a person has the intellect is the most noble of the affairs that a person has been given and you know from this by way of this intellect he can distinguish between that which is harmful, that which, that which is beneficial that which is wholesome and pure and that which, which is filthy and vile and by way of it he is able to understand the affairs of his deen and by way of it is he able to keep away from that which is harmful and so when a person loses his intellect he then reaches the level of the animals and so he, he will then fall into harm and harming others and his um, manners and characteristics will uh, be, become wasted and, and evil and you know they will become wasted and likewise uh, the various beneficial things and the, the, the beneficial interests of other people will, will be lost and for this reason Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he has 
may the severe um, may the severity upon the drinker of uh, alcohol and he has de 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 designated a specific punishment in this life and likewise in the hereafter and the messenger والسلام, informed that such a person will not enter paradise and this is a very severe threat the second type is the one who cuts the ties of kinship and rahim here uh, rahm is what, what it means here is the the uh, nearness or the kinship from the from the side of the father or from the side of the mother and tying the ties of kinship is is obligatory upon islam and it is it comes after doing righteousness to the parents so who are these people who are from the kinship or from the from the ties of kinship they are a person's sons offspring and then their offspring and then the offspring of one's brothers and sisters right the brothers and sisters and then their offspring and then the uncles and aunties on the paternal side meaning on the father side and then their offspring and the uncles and aunties on the mother side and then their offspring and then the grandfathers and the ancestors you know the ancestors right so this is this is what is meant what is referred to or what is meant when we speak of the ties of kinship right so that is the walidain obviously the mother and the father and then one's own offspring and then their offspring and then one's brothers and sisters and then their offspring and one's uncles and aunties on the father's side and their offspring and, un and uncles and aunties on the um, the 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 maternal side on the mother's side and their offspring and then the fathers the grandfathers and so on and so forth so basically the Sheikh says he gives the order he says he, he specifies the order in which tying the ties of kinship is to be given and obviously they are the two parents by giving uh, good behavior to you know towards them and then one's own offspring one's own children and then one's brothers and their you know offspring meaning one's brothers and sisters and then their offspring and then after that the mater the paternal uncles and aunties and their offspring meaning one's cousins and then the maternal uncles and aunties and their offspring which obviously is one's cousins and then the shaykh brings some ayat from the Quran وَعْبُدُ اللَّهَ وَلَا تُشْرِكُوا بِهِ شَيْئًا وَبِالْوَالِدَيْنِ إِحْسَانًا وَبِذِي الْقُرْبَى Worship Allah and do not associate any partners with him and, good be and be benevolent towards the parents and with those near ones, the near relatives and Allah also says وَقَضَى رَبُّكَ أَلَّا تَعْبُدُوا إِلَّا إِيَّاهِ وَبِالْوَالِدَيْنِ إِحْسَانًا and your Lord has decreed that you do not worship anyone except him alone and that you be benevolent to your parents and he also said وَآتِ ذَا الْقُرْبَى حَقَّهُ وَالْمِسْكِينَ وَابْنَ السَّبِيلِ and give the near relative his due right and likewise to the needy one and to the wayfarer to the one who is traveling so the qurba here meaning that the near relatives are those you know they have a right and they have an obligation upon you towards them and any person who cuts off this right then he is a person who has cut the ties of kinship and the one who cuts the ties of kinship is a person who falls into major sin and it is and he is a person who was cursed in the Quran as Allah says فَهَلْ عَسَيْتُمْ إِن تَوَلَّيْتُمْ أَن تُفْسِدُوا فِي الْأَرْضِ وَتُقَطِّعُوا أَرْحَامَكُمْ أُولَئِكَ الَّذِينَ لَعَنَهُمُ اللَّهُ فَأَسَمَّهُمْ وَأَعْمَى أَبْزَارَهُمْ so he says that you know do you um, do you you know perhaps that if you were to turn away that, that if you were to turn away and that you were to uh, create mischief upon the earth and that you were to um, cut the ties of kinship meaning cut the ties of your kinship then those are the ones whom Allah has cursed and has made them to be deaf and has made their vision to be blind has made them blind so meaning here that such people here who cut the ties of kinship then in this ayah Allah has cursed them and so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala likewise in the hadith Qudsi Allah says to the, to the womb that whoever ties you then I will tie you know, with him and whoever disconnects you then I will disconnect him and in, in another hadith um, that occurs that such a person will not enter paradise so all of this shows that this is a very very severe threat for the one who cuts the ties of kinship the third 
مصدق بالسحر 